I wanted to make molds quickly for my bait business, but finding a machinist to cut molds was both expensive and time consuming. So I got a CNC. Now I know what you're saying. Dude, you're the 3D printed mold guy. Yeah, I am. But I've said all along that 3D printed molds are great for prototyping. They're not great for production. What does that really mean? It just means that over time, the more you use a 3D printed mold, the more it tends to flex and move a little bit. Plus to hold them together, you need lots of bolts and nuts. You can use vices to some extent, but my experience is they don't really give you quality, repeatable results. Repeatable is the key thing when you wanna do production. So if I wanna make a bunch of baits quickly, 3D printing is not the way. And really that comes down to having to unscrew and unbolt all of these molds kind of repeatedly. I did some timing tests and with 3D printed molds, if I wanna get into a, a big flow, you know, it takes about 10 minutes between shooting the bait, waiting for them to cool, because again, 3D printed molds don't wick heat like aluminum does, then unbolting them, taking the baits out, putting them back together, and bolting them back together. That process just took a long time. And it really hurt my fingers with those little bitty ribbit nut things, right? So I couldn't produce a lot of baits and it was not very efficient to do so. So aluminum molds, yeah, that's what you wanna do. There's a reason why aluminum molds dominate the industry, right? Like it's the only material people use for molds uh, pretty much on any kind of production level. It wicks heat quickly, they're easy to use. You don't even have to bolt them together. You can slide them together, put a clamp on them. The material is stiff enough to hold that shape all the way through. And you, know, you can shoot them, wait, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, pull the mold apart, hang your bait, you're good. Put them back together, shoot them again. That's fast, that's production, right? Now the problem is, is finding someone to cut them for you can be difficult. Not every person with a CNC machine will be willing to sign up to cut molds. They are a little bit more precise, they're a little bit more difficult. And so the, the few people that make the molds in the industry are super backed up, right? Most people are months out for a mold and uh, they're relatively expensive. Now, the mold makers out there are well worth their money. Like I think they're probably not even charging enough, right? So. I'm not quibbling with how much money they make because uh, again, they're well worth it. So from a business standpoint, if you're starting to pop down 800 bucks a mold every time you want to bring something to production and really you want three or four, now the price will go down a little bit, but let's say for three molds, you're, I don't, let's just say $2,000 for, for three molds, right? I think that's you know a ballpark number that's worth talking about. Um, and you wanna bring 10 baits to the market in a year, that's $20,000 in molds, and you're probably waiting at least a month or two for each of those molds to be done. Right? That, that can be a big constraint on your business moving forward and your innovation and in getting things done. So when I started running the numbers, I'm like, okay, let's just say $2,000 to get a set of molds I can use to produce baits, and um, 10, 10 baits, $20,000, I can probably get a CNC machine for that, be a good skill to learn, good for the channel, good for you guys to see how it's done. I can kind of show you what I've learned and hopefully inspire you guys to do some stuff. So I went out and got an Avid CNC machine, a Pro 4848, which is 48 inches by 48 inches work area. Not a machine that a lot of people look at and go like, that's an aluminum cutting beast. Uh, but at the time I really wanted to also maybe make some plastic parts out of starboard for my kayak, bring some of those products to market, basically cutting sheet material of plastic and this machine seemed like a good balance of those two features. All right, so let's check out my machine. It's set up a little bit differently than a lot of the machines you'll see on YouTube. It's got a starboard spoil board, which is a little not common. A few people I've seen use it, and it's basically there to you know eat bits if you make a mistake. So you cut into the spoil board, you don't cut into any part of the machine. And uh, I used 
starboard because one, I got a piece for free, which was amazing. And two, I'm gonna be cutting aluminum with coolant and MDF, if you hit it with any sort of liquid, is just gonna puff up and become a giant mess, right? Then I added a Saunders Machine Works fixture plate. This fixture plate is actually for the Tormach 1100. It's a little bit bigger. I just uh, milled some holes in my spoil board, threw some bolts in there and bolted it to the spoil board. This gives me a nice work area for aluminum uh, with fixturing with their Saunders Machines mod vise, which I also purchased. And I can hold the molds in place while I'm cutting them. Then I added the CNC Depot S30C spindle, which is a very powerful spindle, high RPM, 24,000 RPM. And it comes with an automatic tool changer setup, which I have set up in the back. We'll be running through all of these in detail in future videos, but I just want to give you a flavor kind of what I'm working with right now. So is this going to make sense? I don't know. Would I recommend someone else go and do this? Maybe not. I'm not sure yet. The, the big deal is the upfront cost. Now I am leasing this machine, so I didn't have to come up with the roughly, I think $19,000, you know, upfront for this machine. It's a lease, you know, I can pay it out over time, hopefully make some money from it with my other projects that are not mold related. I can make an argument that we will save money in the long run, the more molds we produce, at least for shooting in house, that will pay itself off over time. How soon that would be, I'm guessing a year or two before we start seeing, you know, be in the green on this machine as far as cost savings goes. You know, the big, the big leap is the learning of the cam. Like, cam is gnarly, bro. And it, and it impacts all sorts of things. We'll break that all down in a video coming up about all the things that I didn't have to think about in 3D printing that now I do have to think about when designing a bait or a mold to cut on the CNC machine versus 3D print. But hey guys, leave a comment. What do you think? Am I the biggest idiot on the planet for buying this machine to cut molds in-house? Let me know. Take care. Tie lines.